Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. We are going through the very first part of the horror collection that I have. What I will be doing is showing you some of the NECA figures that I have based on horror. And they're going to be in smaller installments because I do have quite a few uh, figures i got to show you. Especially when I get into the actual uh, Xenomorphs. Yeah, i got quite a few of those. So I'm going to have to break them up in smaller uh, videos, okay? So with this in mind, we're going to start off on Annabelle. Uh, this one here has also got the glass case as well as the doll inside. Now keep in mind, I actually wanted to get the full size figure of the doll. But it's like five, six hundred dollars for those things. I'm not willing to pay no six hundred dollars for a doll, no offense, but no, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I have and pretty much, you know, explain some things about it. So... This is Annabelle from the Annabelle movies. There is, in fact, three movies I believe there is now. And I'm not sure if they're actually in the process of doing any more. But it is, they say, based on a true story. Uh, the, the actual characters that are in that film also are part of the Conjuring series. It is part of the Conjuring universe. Along with Valak, or Valak, however you want to pronounce it. I do have that NECA figure, too. I'm going to show you that here next, okay? But anyway, this is Annabelle and the chair and everything. I'm going to pull everything out so you can actually see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this off. All right. All right. Let me get this to open here. Oop. Slam. See? It's possessed. Now the thing about this, she's so petite, so small. All right. Now that does come with different heads. I'm going to show you those right now. Dun da da da. Pull it, pull it in the light so you can actually see it. All right, in the back of the head. Show you the other head. It comes with different facial features. Pull it in the light. There right. you go. Okay, that's Annabelle. The doll in itself is um, its articulation. It does, I'm not sure how many points of articulation it has, but it does bend at the elbows as well as the wrists. The head does move. The body is exactly a doll, a basic NECA figure. As you can see, it does come with legs and everything. It comes with nice little white shoes, okay? All right. And that's what she looks like in the back. Now this is actually based off of the Raggedy Ann doll that they say was in fact possessed. And obviously they just created the doll for the movie. But like I said, I would love to get one of these, but unfortunately they're a little too pricey. And unless I was rich, then I wouldn't mind so much, but I'm not rich. so. But most of you will understand that. Okay, that is Annabelle. I'm going to grab the chair. There you go. That's the chair, guys. Sorry about the shadowing here. Just your basic chair that she sits in. Alright. Now we're going to put that back in here. And we're going to somehow put her in there without being clumsy about it. Right. Ooh, we got her in there, no problem. Hmm, cool. Alright. Close the door. Remember, as the door does say, warning. Positively do not open. But I end up opening it, so guess what? She's out to play. Okay, guys? Let me show you the rest of the box. Oops. And that's what she looks like all the way around. Okay, the bottom. I got this uh, about three months ago. Not too long ago. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get into Valak or Valak. Now this one here, I will not stand because it doesn't have the traditional holes in the bottom of this figure. It's not your standard uh, 
Next I figure. But this is Valak. The hood on it does come off, okay, as you can see. Alright. And it's folded in a different way. You can stretch it out as you can see. And it's got a little bendy wire here. So you can form it around her shoulders as well as her neck. Now keep in mind, Valak is in fact a male demon that actually was the head of some kind of realm down in hell and somehow escaped and took possession of a nun. And she's all through the Conjuring series as well as the uh, the nun. There is in fact a uh, new movie coming out based on the nun. I'm not sure when it's coming out. 2022 maybe, I'm not sure. But it's not it's not in production yet, but you know. They did green light it, so keep that in mind. And that's what she looks like. Now it normally comes with a cross, but I don't have the cross. Apparently they don't, you know, include the cross on this one here. But when you see it, you know, see that's what I'm talking about right here. Okay. And that's Valak. I don't think I can get her to stand. Yeah, so she's a pain in the butt to stand. I gotta literally lean her against the wall. Oh, there you go. All right. We got her to stand. Let me see if I can pull that back a little bit. All right. So I'm gonna turn this on. I'm not knocking it over. There we go. Always did like this character. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying? She doesn't want to stand. <laughs> I jumped too soon. But anyway. You get the idea of Valak. Right? It is part of the Conjuring series. She is a possessed nun. Right? Now when I was actually watching the movie The Nun, they were over there I believe in Romania and the landscape and everything was absolutely gorgeous. It just caught my eye the way they scanned across the graveyards and everything. It would be very cool just to go over there just to check out that area. And it's also based on a church over there. I can't remember the name of the church. There are videos out there that explain the church and everything and its history. Uh, but the movie in itself, in my opinion, is a pretty decent film. Okay. But anyway, that's Valak. Now let's get into... Let's put her down here. Pennywise. Now this is the 1996 NECA version. All right. Let's see if I can get her to, in the stand. Now, I would have this on a stand, but unfortunately, as you can see here on the bottom of the feet, it's got the little holes. I've had them on stands, and because of the weight of the balloons, it shifted, and this figure would always fall and end up snapping. So as you can see, I got some of the stems inside the shoes. So I just got a little... Get them in a position where I don't fall. There you go, guys. I got the balloons that come with it. Now, when you see the balloons, you'll understand why she is top heavy. Got a whole bunch of balloons when it comes to the 1996 version of Tim Curry's Pennywise. This one is not as evil as the 2017 uh, version, and that's because of the way they treated it. But anyway, it is a very cool mini-series. It is not a movie like a lot of people are assuming. It was actually an NBC mini-series that came out, and I think they did it for three nights. And I do have the mini-series sitting on my hard drive, and I'll watch it once in a while. But like I said, it doesn't have the serious horror tones like the 2017 version. All right? Now, I do have a Toonie Terror version of this, but unfortunately, it fell off the shelf on me, and for some strange reason... One of the feet snapped off and it hit the ground, but I can't find it anywhere. It could be bounced up on the shelf or something. I'll come across it one day and re-glue it back because I got some uh, Gorilla Glue, so it should be good to go. But if not, if I can't find it, then I will eventually purchase a new ter Toonie Terror version of Pennywise, the 19 1996 version anyway. So let's get a close-up look at this guy. Okay. They did a nice job, the colors and everything, the details. It's a very cool outfit too, believe it or not. 
A lot of people are freaked out by clowns. Me, I think they're cool, okay? That's just me, okay? I do have some um, uh, clown masks that I do have on this channel. You can check them out. There's three of them I got so far. I'm not done collecting clown masks because, like I said, I do like clown masks. Okay, and clowns in general. But that is Pennywise from the 1996 miniseries. It's a Tim Curry version. Along with the balloons. And it does come with other accessories, but they're in bags, stuck in a closet. Alright, so the next thing we are going to get into is the other Pennywises that we have here. These are, in fact, the 2017 version. Okay, now this one's very cool looking. This one is portrayed by Bill Skarsgård. The whole entire family, his father, and he's also got, um, I think his name is Adam Skarsgård, who also played in Godzilla vs. Kong. They're all actors, all right? They're all really good actors. He did a fantastic job on Pennywise, in my opinion. I totally love the movies. The second one was good. Now, I, there's, I think they greenlit a third one. How they're going to handle that one, I don't know. But uh, this particular Pennywise in the clown outfit and everything is very cool looking, in my opinion. Very old school. Um, but anyway, let me show you what it looks like. Oops. It does only come with one balloon. And it does come with other accessories, okay? Sorry about the shadowing because of the lighting. I'm going to have to do a better job on the lighting. Right, but you get the idea of what it looks like. And it does come with different heads. Again, they're in the bags, in the closet. So I put the best heads on it that I like. In most cases, I like to put the scarier ones on it, but that's just me. Right. The detail on this thing is amazing. Okay, now the torso, as you can see right here, it's different. Okay, but you can twist it. Most NECA figures, they have 32 points of articulation. They will bend almost exactly the same way each and every time. And that's the figure. Now, you see I got it on a stand. She stands pretty good, good for the most part. The next one I'm going to show you, not so much because of the long arms on it. She is a little, um, kind of moves forward, so you got to kind of reposition it to the point that it stands up. And here we go. It's the crab version of Pennywise. Now, as you can see, his face is a little mess. I'm going to pull that in close so you can actually see it. It does, again, come with different heads. Okay, as you can see, he's bent a little forward because of the arms. The arms make him a little top heavy, so to speak, and he kind of topples over. So I had to position him so he doesn't keep falling. Right, let me show you what that looks like here. The, see the crabs now the arms do move just as well as it does right here see they both move in the same way and they move back and forth this way okay his face on the other hand he's got something going on here okay he's swallowing something or he's spitting out some arms and hands I think those are very cool I like the ugliest one so and that's what you get right there. Pennywise in this movie, the way they handled the CGI, they did a really fantastic job on it. I think he's cool looking. But that's Pennywise from the second movie, okay? Obviously, it's the crab movie, or crab version. He does go into his full form towards the end of the movie, if you haven't seen it. Sorry about the spoiler. But if you haven't seen these movies, you might want to check them out if you're into horror. They are really good movies, in my opinion. Though a lot of people, you know, you're going to have your fans say, Oh, I didn't like it, you know. It's just the way it is. It's just, it's just how some people are, okay? Oh, see? That's what happens when you try to reposition it. There we go. But anyway, that's the crab version of Pennywise. Now we're going to get into the other NECA figures based on 
Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Now these guys are a royal pain in the ass when it comes to standing them up. These are NECA figures and I purchased these a long time ago because I like the Season of the Witch. Now a lot of people don't like the actual movie. All right. See how that's just don't want to stand. There we go. Keep it like that for now. And let me find the other one here. Here he is. Right here. Okay. All right. That's the season of the witch here, guys. These kids are, in fact, possessed by the mask that they wear. I do have the actual mask if you want to check out the video. Um, I do have Trick or Treat Studios, all three of the masks, okay? It's sitting on this channel under the playlist, uh, Horror and Halloween Masks, so go ahead and check them out if you want to check out the masks. Uh, they do have the shamrocks on them, and the shamrocks in themselves actually control the people's minds when they wear these masks, and obviously they go and do crazy things, okay? But anyway, these guys here, when I first purchased them, they're smaller figures. Uh, they're such a pain in the butt to stand. You can leave them like this, and I can guarantee you, you'd find one of these on the ground. I think they're possessed. Okay, no, just kidding. But anyway, long story short, you have to position these guys so they don't actually fall over. But they are very cool. I do like them. Okay, hang on, let me stretch them back out here. Here we go. That's better. See how she rocks back and forth because she doesn't want to stand perfectly. Alright, enough about these figures here. These figures here are about maybe six inches tall and they got the same kind of articulation as um, most NECA figures. The heads do, they are interchangeable. I believe, if I remember correctly, they do have two different heads. This one here, obviously, you can put the hat on them. So, you see? And that's what he looks like. But anyway, that is my NECA figures based on Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. These are, in fact, the antagonists in the film, is the masks. Now, a lot of people are not aware of the fact that Michael Myers is actually in the film... He makes a cameo as they're walking by and you see a TV on. He shows up on the TV briefly. Okay, that's the only time you see him. A lot of people don't like the movie simply because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. So they kind of have a tendency to exclude it from the, the Halloween series because they don't have Michael. But anyway, moving on. Sorry if this is taking so long, guys. But I just want to move these guys so they don't collapse and do anything crazy. Alright, now this guy here does come with a sign, but I mis uh, misplaced the sign. Okay. Now that right there, if I can pull him back, is Pumpkinhead. Okay. Yeah, you can see him. He's coming around. Alright, this is a McFarlane figure. It is roughly maybe 8 to 10 inches tall. I think it's about 8 inches tall. I don't have my tape measure, otherwise I'd show you. But, as you can see, he's highly detailed. When it comes to McFarlane figures, they are fantastically detailed. I got some Xenomorphs that are based on McFarlane, and they are ridiculously detailed. More so, in my opinion, when, uh, over uh, NECA figures. They can, it's just the way they handle them and stuff. They really put a lot of effort into the details of this thing. This thing here is ridiculously movie accurate. Obviously the movies in themselves, the actual uh, character does change through the movies. There's a total of four movies based on Pumpkinhead. Not sure if they're actually pushing out a new one, though it would be cool if they rebooted it and give him a brand new look. But anyway, uh, he does change through the, uh, the series. Because the CGI is not as good as it progresses. The first one, in my opinion, is Stan Winston special. Obviously, he does a fantastic job. Okay, Pumpkinhead. There are some huge uh, figures. I think there's a Soba figure that is a one-quarter scale, I think it is. or I don't know, Anyway, 
it stands roughly around 12, 12 inches tall. It's huge. It's absolutely amazing looking. But it's like four or five hundred dollars for that figure. Look at that. I love the design of this uh, pumpkin head. And the unique thing about this is when he's done his job, uh, he goes into this like childlike form and they turn around and bury him back in the pumpkin patch until somebody resummons him again. It's like a, a continuing cycle. Okay, and that's what he looks like. Okay, chest on that thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very cool design, in my opinion. Anyway, that's my pumpkin head. All right. And now we are going to get into the old fawn. This guy actually fell just the other day. All right, but I got him on a stand now. As you can see. Hang on, let me get him positioned right. There we go. This guy is very cool looking. He is from Pan's Labyrinth, Guillermo del Toro's movie, but it's all in Spanish. And obviously, if you want to see it, you're going to have to watch it in subtitling. There is another creepy creature in it that has his eyes uh, in his hands and stuff. I forgot what they called him. But anyway, I'd love to pick up one of those figures. I think he would be cool. A nice collection to, these, to uh, my horror collection. But anyway, this is the old fawn that he actually talks to that little girl in the movie. I haven't seen the movie in such a long time. Not since it first came out. It first came out, not first came out. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, he's got very cool designs, which I'm going to show you here. Look in the hips right there. Very swirly. There is a reason for the design like this. Uh, whoever actually designed this it did an amazing job, in my opinion. The old fawn is a very cool looking character. And he's got some cool accessories too, as you can see here. Right, get you up and out of the way. Move him to the side. There we go. And you got his satchel in the back here. Which needs to be, I think, over the shoulder here. And then laying across the back like so. Here we go. This actually does open up, but I'm not going to mess around with it. And it's got a little bone in it, okay? And that's what she looks like in the back. It's a very cool design. When they first came out with this, I hesitated to buy it, but I said, no, I like old fawn. Let's get it. And that's exactly, sorry about the camera. That's what his face looks like. Okay, I believe there's a couple of more figures I want to show you. Right. Now this in here, oh, sorry this is taking a while guys, there we go, put him in a position so he don't fall, alright, alright, get this guy here, let you look at him for a little bit. This, oh, what the heck. Oh, what the heck, hang on. <laughs> there you go. Chucky. Okay, let me just grab these other things because we're going to get ready to show you these. Got to pull them around the corner here. All right. I got two more. I got one more figure after Chucky here, and then we're gonna end this bundle, and then move into the next horror bundle. All right. So, with that in mind, I will show you what these things look like up close, and then I'm gonna show you my last little prop here, which, which I think is cool. All right. It's part of the Halloween series. But anyway, Chucky. All right. All right. Obviously, you don't want to stay on now. See the, the knife. Okay. He does come with a knife. <clears throat> also comes with the poker. Okay. Not totally familiar with which one. This, I think this came from part two. Not positive. But as you can see, that is the seat of Chucky's face. All right. There is. Uh, this is the ultimate Chucky. He does come with various heads. I think there's two or three more heads that come with this from the different movies. They do have a um, life-size good guy doll. That's $600 for that thing. 
for some reason they want to charge an ungodly amount of, and Trick or Treat Studios has one of this too they want to charge an ungodly amount of money for these dolls and people buy them because they're um, not crazy but they, they just love the characters and stuff okay well, that's Chucky right there guys he is roughly around maybe three to four inches tall and like I said, the heads are different. The hair is different on the heads and everything. But anyway, that is my Chucky doll. It's from the Ultimate Collection. And it does come with an ungodly amount of accessories. It also comes with... Why didn't that stay there? Let's move it to the next one here. Yeah, that's a tighter fit. Uh, it comes with the Good Guy doll box. So you can actually put him in the box. I think that's cool. The Ultimate Collection, if you ever want to pick one of these up, it's got all kinds of cool stuff in it. It comes with a yardstick, uh, as well as, I think, a hammer and some other accessories. All right. This guy right here is a TV set. It's from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I'm going to show you what it does. It's got that 3D thing going on. But it is a TV set, and you can see in the back here coming around, you can put it on the wall if you want. I don't know. I wouldn't do it, but it ain't just me. But anyway, this TV set here. Uh, what, see, it's got the shamrock on it. See how it changes? Happy, happy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that's what that does. See that? Very cool. Old TV set. They don't make these things anymore. You can find them. They're very retro. Okay, it's got the little knobs. You literally have to get up and change the channels on these TV sets. But anyway, in the TV set, in the movie itself, is very similar to this one here. You actually see Michael Myers on the screen. Okay. But like I said, it's got that little thing where you can actually hang it up on the wall if you want. That's up to you. But it is, in fact, a TV set that's based on what you first see uh, the pumpkin coming up on the screen. And it just like, do, 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 happy Halloween, happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, something like that. But anyway, that's my TV set. Now we're going to get to the last one. And that, my friends, now I'm going to tell you a little story about this guy here. Sam from Trick or Treat. Okay, now you notice the head has been switched out. It does come with the... Um, the round burlap bag version I do have that but for the longest time I didn't watch this movie I knew it existed but I just said ah, I'm not gonna watch that movie I don't feel like it you know but when I finally did watch it I'll tell you what it's the most Halloween slash horror movie that I've seen in a very long time and I thoroughly enjoyed every aspect about it Sam in himself is more like a guardian of rules when it comes to Halloween and if you stray from those rules, like breaking pumpkins or something like that, you will be punished by Sam, I promise you that. He'll take that lollipop and stick it in your eye. <laughs> but anyway, when I first saw the movie, I said to myself, damn, that's a good movie. Michael Doherty, who actually did the movie, also did uh, Krampus in 2015. That's a fantastic movie. I love Krampus, okay? also did Godzilla King of the Monsters in 2019 that movie in itself because I'm a Godzilla fan it has some really cool aspects about it especially Ghidorah um, Godzilla I was never a fan of the MonsterVerse Godzilla I just don't like the design sometimes when I look at it it's like yeah it's a cool design you know what I'm saying but I'm not totally locked in on that Godzilla but anyway the movie in itself <clears throat> the way that um Ghidorah manhandled Godzilla, which obviously that should be that way because Ghidorah is the, his most powerful adversary. There is nothing that's stronger. Some would say Destroya or Space Godzilla. They come a close second, but I don't think they would equal Ghidorah because Ghidorah is just too powerful. And he was like that all through the other movies, with the exception of GMK. He somehow was a good guy in that one, and he had a weird design, and he was young. He wasn't a full-grown adult, and that's another reason why he lost that fight in that movie anyway. But anyway, Ghidorah has always been one of those powerful, menacing uh, adversaries. That took a lot of kaiju just to take him down. 
and this one was no exception. Godzilla had, a, had did a, a, a serious upgrade to the point that he went thermonuclear, and that was the only way he could defeat him, and he did, okay? But I, when I seen that, I was like, oh, no, man, why can't Godzilla just beat him outright? <laughs> That's just my opinion. But anyway, uh, the way they handled it, don't get me wrong, it was cool. But anyway, Michael Doherty has done that movie as well. Okay, not sure what his future projects are, but this is Sam, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this pumpkin here. It does not light up. Now, I do have a Halloween pumpkin prop based on the first Halloween. Michael Myers, 1978, it does light up. Okay. But that is a pumpkin. And it also comes with this other pumpkin, which I'm going to show you. I don't know if it still works or not. It's battery operated. Yeah, it does. Okay, still works. Okay. See the light? Okay. Up inside. Alright. Okay. Anyway, that's pointy too. You gotta watch that. If you have kids, you know, poke their eyes out, so be careful with that. Okay, with Sam, uh, it does come with a different head, like I said. Uh, I think it has 32 points of articulation. You can see the way he stands on the stand. He looks amazing, in my opinion. Okay, um, what other thing I was going to say about that? Oh, I also got the, on uh, pre-order, not pre-order, but it's in that, my Amazon list. I will eventually get it. I want to get the um, unfaced, or I mean unmasked version of Sam through Trick or Treat Studios. I'm definitely going to get that mask coming in. When, I don't know, but eventually I'll be able to start buying masks again because my vehicles decided to go ahead and give me problems, so I had to sink a lot of money into them, so I had to stop buying for now, but eventually I will get back on board. But anyway, this is my entire collection, guys. I hope you enjoyed it so far. Not my entire collection. For this bundle, okay? I am calling them horror bundles because I'm going to be doing them in smaller sections, okay, guys? Because I've got quite a few. Like I said, i got the Xenomorphs and also the Predator and some other characters. i got my Pinhead collection I want to show you. And, um... So stay tuned for all that. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see those videos, okay? In the meantime, I do appreciate you guys watching. This is Pumpkin Horror. You guys have yourselves a good day.